and welcome to Templar Night TV broadcasting on YouTube and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and also join me on the templarnight.com blog where you can get all the latest Templar news and information. And in this edition of Templar Night TV we're going to be looking at a question I know you're very interested in. What is the difference between the Knights Templar and the Knights Hospitaller. And also, we're going to be looking at what I've been up to on TV of late. So here is a night hospitaller walking across the screen right now. What exactly was a night hospitaller? And what was the difference between him and the Knights Templar? Everybody's heard of the Knights Templar because of the appalling fate that those knights faced in 1307. Fewer maybe have heard of the Knights Hospitaller, but was there any difference between these two ostensibly rival orders of knights? The Knights Hospitaller then were the arguably the older order of knights. They were set up before the Crusaders invaded Jerusalem in 1099. And what they did was they ran a hospital in Jerusalem funded by Italian merchants for pilgrims who got ill while on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. After Jerusalem was taken and with the setting up of the Knights Templar, the Knights Hospitaller seemed to have rapidly militarised, moving from being, if you want, a, an infirmary for pilgrims to being a full-blown military order. In terms of military attire, the Templars and Hospitallers didn't look that different. The Hospitallers were black mantles, the Templars had white mantles, both of them had crosses uh, on the mantles. In terms of organisation, both orders had Grand Masters and the rule by which they lived was broadly similar to that of the Cistercian monks. It's said that the Hospitallers were more popular in certain parts of Europe, like Bohemia and Hungary, um, but both orders, in terms of their upper echelons, were mainly French. French knights dominated both orders. And the Templars and Hospitallers uh, built extremely impressive fortresses in the Holy Land to try and retain those lands for Christendom. But I suppose one of the most famous fortresses is Crac de Chevalier in modern Syria. That was built by the Knights Hospitaller. Uh, it's still a very impressive construction today, but unfortunately in recent years it's been caught up in the civil war in that country and was even at one stage bombarded. But still a hugely, hugely magnificent construction in Syria. By the year 1307, with a certain degree of crusader fatigue setting in across Europe, the Pope did try to merge the Knights Hospitaller and the Knights Templar. But the Templars absolutely refused to be merged with the Hospitallers and Jacques de Molay, who was the last Grand Master of the Templars, may have come to have regretted that decision as he languished in prison, year after year being tortured into making confessions that he later retracted before being burnt at the stake in 1314. During their trials, the Templars were accused of all manner of crimes, uh, particularly heresy and sodomy and having very questionable initiation rites. The Hospitallers were not accused of the same thing. They weren't put on trial at all, in fact. And they emerged from that period unscathed. And not only that, but they managed to grab some of the disgraced Templars' property. In the centuries that followed the destruction of the Knights Templar, the Hospitallers continued to fight crusades in the Mediterranean, particularly against the emerging power of the Ottoman Empire. But eventually they ceased to be a military organisation and essentially went back to what they'd been right at the beginning, a charitable foundation doing goodly deeds. So what have I been up to on TV of late? Well, I've been involved in the making of a series, a new series on the Ark of the Covenant, and I'll be telling you more about that on the blog 
when it hits your TV screens, but it's going to be a real showstopper, let me tell you that. And Covid did not stop us filming. I'm also going to be in the latest series of Strange Evidence, which starts broadcasting in the United States in March 2021. So you may be catching it already when this broadcast uh, is on YouTube. That's all I've got time for for today. Um, it's been a bit of a rough start to the year, I've got to say, because my own father unfortunately died of complications related to COVID. He was 83, so thankfully he had a long and uh, fulfilling life, but still a, a terrible loss uh, for me and, and my family. And I'm sure many of you have experienced loss as well as the result of this terrible pandemic. So my condolences to any of you who've suffered loss or have just suffered as a result of COVID. Hopefully we are all emerging from this modern day plague. Until I meet you again then, non nobis domine.